Oh, okay, kids, we're back. And uh, we have a couple of people with us today. You're looking at Mr. Ben Hubbard, and he is in Thailand. How you doing, Ben? I'm pretty well, thanks, Jim. Good to be here. Great to have you. It's very excited to have you from uh, around the world. And of course, kids, you know David Ambush. Coach Ambush is the PE coach at, um, at the High Point Eagles. Uh, and uh, he's been to, over here to Cyprus. David, how's it going? Going very well. Happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Really happy to have you. So, so uh, David is going to sit in with us on this interview with Ben for a while, and he may have to leave before it's over or may not. But I wanted to talk with Ben, you guys, because uh, he's just such an interesting person. He is, first of all, he's a PE teacher, and he's in Thailand all the way around the world, but he's also taught in some other amazing places. He put some really cool things out on video, some of which I've used with you guys. So I'm gonna ask him some questions. So Ben, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your, your just tell us the Ben Hubbard story. <laughs> well, you made it sound really interesting. I should it is my interesting. Um, Well, I'm from a place called South Wales, which is next to England. Um, I've been brought up there many years ago. My dad was a professional footballer. He played in um, the league below the Premiership and the Championship for Swindon. Um, and then it, from an early age, I was brought up very, very uh, in a sporting background. I love playing football, obviously, with my passion. But my dad also taught me to play all of the sports as well. Um, which I think your coach, you know, Mr. Mr. Hart, he will tell you all about. I think it's good to be a bit of an all-rounder. So even if you play football, I still just stop in the summer to play tennis and badminton and play other activities as well. But with the football background my dad had, um, I actually used to go and help him coach football from an early, well, I go to football schools, his uh, academies, and then I used to help him coach as well when I was 14, 15. And that brought me into the, the passion of sort of teaching and coaching and the enjoyment you get of helping like, um, like younger students progressing and seeing the smiles on their faces. And it's something that really inspired me from an early age. So I got a bit through that and I left, you know, being from South Wales, we don't see the big yellow thing in the sky called the sun. So we went, I went all the way over to um, Australia for a year and then I came back. And then I went to America. I coached in the Midwest with you guys, Midwest in Kansas City. I was coaching a lot of soccer there. And then I went to become a teacher. So I went back to England to teach for three or four years. And then I went to Thailand, where I am now. But, but I left to go to Beijing. So I was in China, right next to the Forbidden City and all the cool places from there. The Great Wall wasn't very far. Um, did three years there. And then I went to Paris. My school was right next to the Eiffel Tower. It really was. Um, and also our school was at National School of Paris. We had a lot of famous people there. Um, I coached a few guys of footballers, soccer. We had um, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic's uh, kids in my class. We had Thiago Silva. We also had a lot of film stars' kids, Johnny Depp's kids. Vanessa Paradis was living in Paris. Um, Gerard Depardieu and also things like Fifth Element director, Luc Besson. So um, yeah, I lived in Paris for three years, a uh, very, very cool experience. But then, um, yeah, I was getting kind of cold and you guys in Tampa can appreciate this. It's the warm weather makes a big difference and that's why I moved back to Thailand. And um, I've been working in Thailand again for like three and a half years. So um, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Jim, I don't think it's <laughs> that impressive really, but uh, it's something different you, again. Do you know anybody, any single person that, that has done what you've done? Um, well, not specifically where I've been, but I mean, on the international school I scene, there's a lot kids. of... I rest my kids. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating story. So you, so just to summarize, you've, you've taught in uh, China and Beijing, in, near the Forbidden City, in Paris, near the Eiffel Tower. You're in Bangkok, Thailand now. Uh, you grew up in, in South Wales, in the UK. You spent time in the United States coaching soccer. I mean, that's an amazing, you know, that's four or five lifetimes right there. All packed in the sun and you're still young. That's amazing. I, hey, Ben, I wanted to ask you, what, what, what made you want to go to all these places? Why, why did you want to go to all these different places? Um, I think I mentioned before that I'll say I had a sporting background, but also I, I loved other things. I, um, I love, I quite like languages. I learned French at school when I was younger. I wanted to go live in France for a bit, which I, which I finally did. 
Um, I used to switch on the TV and see, I'm not, I'm not kidding you guys, like in, in Wales, it rains all the time. I just look on TV, I see students in like America and, you know, in Florida and Australia all enjoying the sun and doing things. I thought, that life looks better out there. I want, I want some of that as well. So what can I do? <laughs> I love South Wales. I always go back, but uh, I, I had to get out and um, in, in, enjoy it and see the world and just, you know, curious about seeing the world and um, the different experiences it brings. And I wouldn't stop it for the world. It's been great. And coaching sport as well in these countries is, um, it's just been fantastic. Yeah. Ben, that's so cool. Uh, we, we do, I think I mentioned to you in our email that we do themes each year. And this year, our theme is the 20th kid. Uh, and the 20th kid comes off of the idea that, um, you know, of the idea of the 20th person, meaning 19 people out of 20 would do it this way, but the 20th person might do it this other way or might look at something in a different way or something like that. And I think your life is definitely a 20th life if there really is one. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's a little bit different. And um, I guess I could bring, brings me around to a little point, which um, I just want to say, Jim, about your the videos that you guys sent me, the, the students in Cypress Woods. You guys are doing a great job there with the, um, you know, what I see is absolutely brilliant, the movement, music. But more than that is that everybody is participating. For me, maximum participation is really, really important. I love the fact that kids are smiling and being active. Coming back to the 19th, 20th person, um, if you look, I, I like when your students, the boy doing the robot dance, that was absolutely yeah. fantastic. And that was the only time the students like sat down and watched, but then, you know, kids, I mean, teachers don't know everything. They've got a few little ideas we can give to you guys, but then you guys got to take it some, some other place and go and try and create. And that boy doing the robot and everyone's doing the robot and then they're doing I can incorporate a robot with something else, a twirl or something. That's where the ideas start. And that's where, I mean, I think if you, if you look at some of the top sports people in the world, um, you look at people like, I talk about soccer, you've got Messi, Ronaldo, some of the things they do are not coached, they're, they're doing something different. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit American sports now because I, I, I live in Kansas City. I'm a big fan of the Chiefs. I'm going to play Tampa Bay Bucks pretty soon. But you look at the guy in the homes he's played sport differently. He does things that I've never seen. It's like he does like little rugby passes or little underarm baseball passes. These things are not coached. They're different. And although, you know, it's important to listen to your coaches all the time, which I'm sure you guys do. It's important to also be original and creative. And sometimes your instinct feels right. Just do it. You know, we always talk kicking the football. You, you can't toe punt it. And then I saw Ronaldinho Yes. Toe punch in the top corner because you have no back lift or no space, and these things are not coached. So it's good to be that twentieth person sometimes. That's where they stand out. Uh, ben, I, I, you 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 are singing my song, man. This is exactly. What I, <laughs> I completely agree. Completely <laughs> agree. Wow. You didn't tell me to say that either. <laughs> no, no. It's 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 awesome how uh, how uh, how your your thoughts about that are just spot on with something that we might say here at Cyprus. Um, ben, what, what, was the, uh, what was the 9, 10, 11 year old Ben like? You know, I mean, people think that I was probably really cheeky and um, talkative and chatty like I am now, I guess, but no, really, I was, I was quite, um, quite shy. I think that um, my passion came on the sports field. It was kind of my, my sort of safer place to, to play playing, not just football, but any, any sport really. Um, you know, anything like, a, like a tennis ball, you play handball or football or rugby, um, just enjoy playing sport. And I think that brought out the best in me. Um, but I think that I was a late developer for sure. Um, I think that, I think we'll talk about this a little bit later, Jim, about the PE program. I think as a kid who didn't really grow very fast, I was left behind a little bit and I, I, I you know, we played a lot of rugby at school, and I love rugby. But for me, I just got smashed around on the floor, and it wasn't a lot of fun. But when I got bigger and bigger, and I grew in my late teens, it felt a lot better. But um, eight and nine was fun playing a lot of sport. But I, I kind of wish that we were doing the stuff like 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 you doing your PE lessons, Jim, and, and David as well, probably, and just stuff this um, lots of games, mini games, and just sort of always playing. And I was always happy playing these sports and playing something. Wow, that's that's so interesting. Have you read the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell? I've heard of it. I haven't read it. No, it, it's an it's one of the one of the things in there is about uh, birth about birth uh, 
birth dates. Yeah. Uh, you know, and how, how you know, and it's, sound, it's similar to what you're talking about, how if you have a late birth date, go ahead. Yes, I have heard of it, yeah. I, I think, like, I, I read somewhere in New Zealand, which is the best rugby country in the world, that what, what they do there is that they, they, you play matches by your weight. So if you weigh a certain amount, you, you, if you're, like, under, I don't know, 60 kilograms, and then over it, then it doesn't matter how old you are, you're playing with people as big as you, and then the, the top people will always get there, but you've got to bring the masses up, everybody else got to play, and then you, you will get there in the end. And, you know, we don't let, I think, back a while ago, when I was doing sport, that you kind of left your own devices, but you, you will get there. It's just a matter of, um, you know, it, it just will happen. And I think when we're doing PE, that's why I love at the moment doing things like mini small games, you know, instead of, you know, when I, when I was used to be nine or 10, when I was nine or 10, I was on a full size soccer field, a full size <laughs> goal. So I played goalkeeper and I couldn't even, you know, I, I need a step level to touch the goalpost. And, and well, that's no good because you touch the ball once every 20 minutes. But now we do little things where it's all, no matter if it's soccer or if it's, um, you know, basketball or anything, it's just small sided games where you're getting lots of touches of the ball, you're enjoying it. And if something goes wrong, it doesn't matter because you can have a go again pretty soon anyway, you know? So I, I try and do these sorts of things in my um, PE lessons. And um, I, th I think that that's, a, again, that's the best way of gamification and small sided games in it just brings up the best in everybody or as much games in small groups of dance and gymnastics as well and lots of talking communication you know and, and bring in um everybody in the group and being part of it which i think is, is really important that's that's uh, so awesome ben ben tell us about your classes in thailand what are the kids like what are tell us about it yeah so at the moment um even though I'm, I'm a secondary teacher, I'm teaching primary age kids. Uh, I teach the upper grade school, which is um, 8, 9, 10, 11. We, we do the PYP, which is the primary years program. It's um, international baccalaureate. It's kind of, um, you know, I mean, PE and uh, the curriculums are uh, pretty similar anyway. You, you want the best of the students in terms of like, I just told them, talk to you about communication and, you know, perseverance, resilience and, working together and you know if you fail you fail well and, and don't take it badly and i think that in thailand now it's, it's great i got i work with uh, mainly thai kids at school but they all speak english um lovely and respectful um majority of them they, they listen they um keen to do it it's a little bit different uh, perhaps when i taught in england well a lot of the kids were pretty good but it's just a lot more of them and a bit more rowdy but um it's a little bit more respectful here and uh, the facilities at our school are really good and like sort of like do fulfill our program a bit more with, with, the, with the things that we do. So um, yeah, it's, it's really enjoyable at the moment. How, how, uh, how did that, how does that compare or what were the kids like in Beijing? Now, were you with international kids in Beijing or local kids or how did that, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, I was with, Luckily, I've been, since I traveled abroad, I've been in international schools. The only time I've taught state school was back in the UK for four years. Got it. Uh, Beijing, a lot of people, a lot of embassy kids, a lot of embassy children, um, uh, you know, quite a few Chinese as well. But um, yeah, that was pretty cool. It, 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 was, it was a good experience. It was a British school there that I worked for. Um, I'd say what good thing come from there was that during the winters, it would be absolutely freezing cold and you couldn't go outside. It'd be like minus 25 or something, which Ooh. for me, it killed me. Um, but what, what happened was there was a German school and every year they do a handball tournament. I've never seen it before. And then for primary age kids, we did this handball and it was brilliant. And it combined football and basketball and rugby and like, I don't know, all things like the baseball throws and there's all these skills that the kids were picking up. And, and what I've taken from there is I've run handball tournaments in France and then in um here now in bangkok and for primary age children it's a fantastic thing i've been doing with them and um just that's something great. that's well, all skill we we do we do a, a variation of the game we call it team touchdown and uh the the instead of throwing the ball into a goal uh the object is to there's an end zone like there is an american football end zone and you've just got to throw it to a teammate who happens to catch it in the end zone but everything else yeah. is the same. And so there's no goalkeeper and there's no firing the ball. You're, you're, it's all passing. And I, we love it. We, we, yeah, love, we, 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 we love call it. that um, 
end, end, yeah, like an end zone game, end, end ball. We have to throw it and catch it. But the movement to get the players into the end zone is all about, you can bring it to any sport. It's yeah. brilliant. It's a great passing game. And the, kids yeah, love it. and the kids love it. You play small-sided, like you said, which is brilliant. And everybody touches the ball. And then you can have different levels. And you're small, you know, 10 kids over here play at a fast pace. 10 kids over here are taking their time. And everybody's happy. Differentiation. Yeah. And everybody's happy. So, well, Ben, um, I wanted to ask you uh, specifically um, with regard to the routines, the musical routines that you saw us doing. Um, what What is your, I know you've given a, a, a good uh, impression of it already. I guess maybe the thing I want to ask you is, have you seen this type of thing around? Or, or have, you used, have you used music? What What have you seen in terms of, the proactive, intentional use of music in PE. Do you know what? You just remind me, in, in Beijing, you said all the students out and doing the movement, movement to music and getting the, the, the sort of the rhythm with the music that you guys were doing. I, I saw that in Beijing, lots of, lots of the students would be, would be doing that and working as one and doing things with, with balls or they would do it with the, like the Tai Chi and the movement to it. Okay. Um, I've seen that before in, in China. Yeah, that's pretty cool what you guys were doing. Um, but I, I think the movement of music, which you guys do in Cy Cypress Woods, is, is excellent because, um, you know, sometimes you feel like you've got no energy and then you, you go out and the music's on, all of a sudden you perk up and somebody else is doing it and you get going as well. And I think it raises the motivation up and, oh, yeah, we, we can do this, you know. And it, if I, I teach a lot of dance and um, I, I love the way that the, like your students were actually doing things to the beats and moving and then everybody else starts doing it and then, you know, you do like eight beats, you go do something else, you come back in, you combine it. Um, and, and the music makes it all just the rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, and students can actually um, recognize the rhythm and move with it. Um, I, th I think also with things with music, like, uh, you, you know, it can actually bring you up or can calm you down. If you're doing things like yoga and gymnastics, you put a little bit of the music on, they can just go in their own headspace and go and do things. Um, so, uh, you know, what you guys are doing is great. I, like I say, I've seen it once before in China. I don't really see it as much as I should, but it should do because a lot of, actually, I've been on a lot of interviews for international schools and um, they've had, one of the questions is always about music. You use music, you should use music because that's one of the best things that the students really, really motivates them. And um, it's great to see you guys doing that. And I try and do as much as I can as well. Um, it's so interesting. So you teach dance. What, what is it that, who do you teach dance? Tell me, tell us about that a little bit. <clears throat> well, I teach, <laughs> teach dance. Yeah. I do, I mean, I think that I always want to try and be, I, I always want to, I always want to try and do a little bit so the students can actually, you know, reciprocate what you're doing. And even if you can just do five or six different beats or movements that are sort of really distinct movements and then you say to the students right go and make eight beats on your own and if you put some music on that's contemporary and quite popular and the kids like the music then I think sometimes the problems can be the boys doing it but if it's cool hip-hop music or doing things and I'm being a man it'd be a bloke sorry a man who can do it as well then the boys don't mind doing it you know instead of just saying oh we're not going to do that um, and then you just give them eight beats go make your own beats up on your own they combine it with a partner Right, you guys share and do four, four beats, four beats. Okay, so actually you only make four beats up. And then they put the two beats together and you make partner ba um, dancing. And then can they actually make, it could be something that's very simple, like bring the arms together and back or sort of like moving left and dropping the shoulder right. And then they, they do it, reciprocate it. You, you two people go make a four, they make the dance up themselves. And then you've got a dance from just two yeah. beats that you've made up. Hundred. Well, we have this uh, lesson that we do, and and that's what happens in it. And it is one of the best ones. It is the most one of the most totally. lively, engaging. Although, I, I don't, I haven't put them in groups of two. I usually put them in groups of four or five. But, uh, but you know, have I, I just wanted to tell you about something we're doing this year. Have you heard of this thing called Brain Primers? Dr. Lynn Kenny and uh, Mike Kazala. They've started this, and I'll send you something on it. Uh, okay. But we're we're focused on using those brain primers. And the, the idea there is um, there are 16 beat uh, sequences, and they're uh, you know they're you know clap, touch here, there, yeah. you know they're there, and and, uh, 
and they're designed for teachers to use in the classroom as just sort of a quick break. Stand up, do brain prime with 13, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's break. Yeah. But uh, so what we've done is we've taken these brain primers and we're putting them to music and we're making our, our performance around these brain primers. So they're, they're, the brain primers are sort of the, the foundation of the performance and we're adding things in and doing other things. And I don't know if you got a chance to see the, the uh, year end performances that we do, but we do, we, we plan a big one every year. We didn't get the chance to do one last year because of the virus. I don't know if we're going to get the chance to do one this year. Uh, and, but we'll be ready in case we do. I, I, I saw that some of the videos you guys did, like a huge groups of you guys yeah. dancing together. And um, to me, I, I think I've, I've done this once before, in like a swim gala where all, all the students on one house do something. But for what you guys, what it showed me was that you, it just showed that everybody's together working hard together and like a real sense of like comradeship and sort of togetherness in terms of, oh, we're all doing it. And you're taking pride in what you're doing. And I think that really came out in the videos of what you guys are trying to achieve. And the students made such a big effort to, to learn it and get into, into sync with each other and doing it. And, and it, it looks fantastic when it's all happening at once, you know, or everybody's doing it. There's nobody on the site, it's maximum participation. They're all working hard. They're smiling, they're enjoying it. I mean, you know, if, I mean, that's the essence of PE, right? If they're yes. active and enjoying it. Yes, yes. Well, Ben, uh, to the last question I'm going to ask you, where we have some future teachers, some future coaches that are watching us right now. Uh, okay. And of course, everybody has a future of some kind in some capacity. But what advice would you give, especially to anybody that was thinking of getting into teaching and coaching that's 9, 10, 11 years old? What would you tell them? I'd say, uh, first of all, if, if that's what you enjoy doing and go for it, it's, it's a lifetime of a, a career there waiting for you if, if you if you want to do it. Um, I think also, we talked about this before, I think, Jim, sometimes as a coach, people think, oh, it's hard being a teacher. You've got to, um, especially a sports teacher, you've got to make all these plays and drills and doing things. And a lot of the time it's not. It's, it's just about personal skills of you guys keep it simple. and talk to the, the students as you want to be talked to yourself in terms of, you know, trying to encourage people. I mean, what, what, what kid ever got better by being shouted at, you know, in terms of trying to cajole the best out of them. So try and go there, out there and express yourselves. I mean, some of my best experiences in my life has been watching some of my students. I remember back in England, they had a, like, it's quite a tough school and we had a lot of traveler families. There's one girl never, ever supported by mum and dad, but I used to help, but, bring her down and go football matches and she was better than all the boys and she'd be scoring goals left. I don't know how she's not a professional footballer now, but the enjoyment that got out and brought everybody up a bit. And that's just like by just saying, go and express yourself, go and enjoy it. I mean, don't, don't make things complex. There's so many things of complex drills and things, a few little ideas, of course, we've got to give them, but keep it simple and keep it fun. I, I think also that if you're going to do PE, do a lot of games and challenges. I think you've seen from my tennis ball challenge. Yes. I, I, I put a game into it. I want it to be a game, right? If you're playing somebody, can you guys do this one? What, how many of these challenges can you do? Oh, I do five, I can do six. Yes. I, I don't mean to be critical on anybody. I think there's a time and a place for, for fitness, but I'm seeing a lot of things on flip a card and do 10 burpees, which yeah. is okay. But how much fun is like, right, can you beat your friend at throwing and catching a ball and you're playing against um, somebody? Kids love games. I mean, when I go to football practice and the coach says, right, run around 10 times, I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Right. So, you know, I kind of want to do things that I'd like to do myself. And I think that's important that, uh, to any aspiring teachers, do things that you'd like to do yourself. Oh, that's, that's, that's great advice. And uh, we're, we're in the same category as you, Ben, uh, as far as the standard, you know, do this, do that. It will, will it, it's just, it, who would want to do that? You know, I always, I always tell the kids, um, I remember my fifth grade self. I remember my fourth grade self. I would have been bored with this. I would have loved this. I would have, you know, exactly. and just staying connected to that. And by the way, the tennis ball challenges are awesome. And uh, <laughs> we you. are, we are, we are getting into them. And we did uh, one of our focus on achievement night routines about eight or nine years ago was, was involving tennis balls and involving one and then later two tennis balls. 
we were some of the ones like when you were throwing the ball off the wall and then and then 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 moving the other one so you had two balls going and catching and throwing. Yeah. we were just doing things like that but off the ground and it's the same idea but but they, they love it and imagine all the learning that's taking place absolutely and i like what you just said then it's just been it's something very simple you know i, th I think that maybe as students we were as kids we were um you know left our own devices go and create a game go and do something and these are all games you do because you've got nothing else to do ball against the wall and i think that these games are still great now and we've got all computers and graphics and doing things but to get out and throw a ball against the wall and bet you get your skills going and, and then find a challenge or a a level you can beat. I mean, it's, it's, it's so to me, it's more of a fun thing to do than anything Agreed. else. Agree. Well, Ben, I so appreciate you joining us here today uh, and love your advice that you gave. Really, really grateful for the beautiful words about our kids. This yeah, that's true. Thank you so much for that. And uh, let's stay in touch, okay? Thanks for having me, Jim. I really appreciate it. Great talking to you and um, sharing ideas from yourself as well, your kids, yeah. Beautiful. All right, Ben. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna sign off now, and thank you very much. All right, we. Oops.